Welcome back to another reaction video, everybody. Welcome to everyone who has uh, just found the channel in the last few days. There seems to be a bunch of you. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. If you don't celebrate Christmas, best wishes, whatever you may be doing uh, right now, stay safe. Uh, I wanted to do another reaction video today, but something a little different. This is actually a video that was put together that I stumbled across uh, on YouTube a few days ago, and it's a timeline of World War II films, and I think there's some TV uh, series in here as well. And and it basically just goes from the beginning of the war and uh, the fall of 1939 all the way through the end of the war. And it kind of does a timeline of, of films and, and series that were covering that particular time. Now, I have not seen a lot of these, uh, but the ones I have seen, I do want to kind of offer some feedback. And I'm probably not going to stop it too much. I'm just going to let it play and kind of talk through my thoughts uh, on each of the series, the ones that I've seen or the ones that I would like to see. Uh, and I would love to hear your thoughts as well. Use that comment section below. Please hit that like button. And if you haven't already, subscribe. We're trying to hit a 1,000 subscribers before the 1st of 2021. And we're on our way to do it if you will help out. So thank you. Let's dive in. So this is the pianist. I believe he won Best Actor uh, at the Oscars for this. I've not seen it. But I believe it takes place in Poland. I most recently saw this actor in, um, is that Roberto Benigni? I uh, saw him in Peaky Blinders and he was fantastic in that. My Way, I've not seen that one. Looks like, is that taking place in uh, probably the J Japanese invasion of China? I would guess. Looks like that's where it's taking place. That's certainly Japan. I don't think I've seen this one either. The Winter War. So I guess we're talking about the uh, Soviet invasion of Finland. That one looks interesting. I have not seen that. I really need to expand my horizons in some of the theaters of war that don't involve American military. Because I don't know nearly enough about them. April. I don't know this one either. This is fairly new. Norway. So the King's Choice. This, I have not seen the entire movie, but it has one of the most fantastic scenes I've seen. And it's when the German, I think it's a cruiser is coming in. I can't remember the name of the ship, but the uh, the shore battery opens up on and sinks this, this cruiser. It's all fantastic scene from that film. There's Dunkirk. I have seen that and it's fantastic, but it's not a typical war film it's it's not you know full of action with the shaky cameras and the whole bit but it does tell an amazing story and i highly recommend dunkirk so i guess the flags are showing what country this takes place in battle of britain highly recommended i'm sure many of you have already seen that one but uh such a pivotal point uh, in world war ii and it's a fantastic a fantastic film. Fortress of War. I haven't seen this one either, but it looks like it takes place in the Soviet Union. Must be the Eastern Front. Looks interesting. There have been a lot of really good films lately uh, exploring other parts of the conflict other than the traditional um, 1944 in Europe or 1944-45 in Japan. Attack on Leningrad? I haven't seen this one either. These are all fairly recent too. There must be a film company or something that's been making films covering the, uh, the Eastern Front. Honestly, the only one I've really seen is uh, Enemy at the Gates. Battle of Sevastopol. There's another one taking place on the Eastern Front, and this looks really good. Wow, this this is I mean this is high budget here. This is uh, 
This might go to the top of my list on ones I want to see. This looks really good. Be curious to hear from anybody who's actually seen it. Tora Tora Tora, one of the all-time best. It's about the uh, the events leading up to and including the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. Oh, it's uh, I'd put this probably in my top five World War II movies ever made. Really, really well done, especially for 1970. Covers both sides. Um, doesn't really you know show a lot of bias one way or the other. The Railway Man, not familiar with this. This looks like uh, South Pacific. Yeah, I'm just not really familiar with this one. No, Max, my friend. I think we have just witnessed the fall of the British Empire. Australia. There's another one I'm not familiar with. So this is probably taking place around the time of the Battle of the Coral Sea, which kind of put an end to Japan's hopes of being able to take Australia. Um, Midway, it's 1976. I watched this yesterday. I watched both Midways, 19 uh, or the 2019 and the 1976. Uh, both well done, though the 19 the 2019 one sticks a little closer to history. Um, 1976 has some fictional characters and things like that, like uh, Charlton Heston's character, who didn't really exist. Uh, I wasn't crazy about that. There's Enemy at the Gates. Again, one of my all-time favorites. Such a fantastic uh, film. Again, probably throws in some creative license, but most of them do that. But Jude Law playing Vasily Zaitsev, uh, one of the Soviet Union's all-time snipers. Excellent, if you haven't seen it. The Thin Red Line. This one came out a long time ago, right around the time that Saving Private Ryan came out. But it covers the Pacific Theater. Also really, really good. Probably one of the better ones uh, done about the war in the Pacific. The Big Red One. I've not seen this one, but... I would assume it's about the U.S. 1st Infantry Division because they were called the Big Red One. Probably Africa. I've never, I don't even know that I've ever heard of that one. Stalingrad. I've not seen this one, but I've heard good things about it. I would love to hear your comments about that one as well if you've seen it. Ninety-three. I don't remember that one coming out. Oh, there's Patton. Again, uh, George C. Scott, fantastic portrayal as Patton, but George Patton did not talk like that at all. He actually had kind of a high voice, and he talked kind of like this. But if you watch, there's a couple of YouTube uh, videos of speeches of Patton's. But Patton, one of my favorite commanders from the war. Uprising. Oh, that's, uh, what's that? What's her name? uh... Angelina Jolie's dad. I forget his name now, but um, he. Uh, this must be about the the ghetto uprising, Generation War. I've heard good things about that, but I haven't seen it. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people comment about that one, but I've never seen it myself. The Tuskegee Airmen. I have seen that one. Uh, and then there was another movie, um, Red Tails, made about some of the Tuskegee Airmen a few years ago. I haven't seen the 95 one, I don't think. I think I've only seen Red Tails. It just may be that I don't remember it. Anzio. I've never seen that one either. It's the war in Italy. U.S. invading uh, Italy in 1944, uh, landed in Sicily, and then kind of worked their way up the peninsula from there. They're saving Private Ryan. Uh, 
course, you know, everybody knows about that phenomenal opening scene of the landings at Omaha Beach by the Rangers. They're just so intense. But honestly, I'm not crazy about that movie because so much of it is fictionalized, even though it's inspired by a true story. But there is my all-time favorite of any war series in history, Band of Brothers. Oh, my gosh. It's just... I've probably seen it six times. I've read the book. I've read a number of the books by some of the men who served in that unit. Um, boy, I could not recommend that one enough. Wind Talkers is also very good. That's got Nicolas Cage. Uh, it's about the Navajo Code Talkers who were used in the Pacific to um, uh, to communicate uh, because the Japanese couldn't break the code. Uh, but they all had men assigned to them who were supposed to kill them rather than allowing them to fall into enemy hands so that they could be tortured. Cross of Iron, I'm not familiar with that one. I mean, it's obviously in the Soviet Union, but I don't know much more about it. The Pacific, um, made by the same people who made Band of Brothers. Uh, very good. And I think on its own probably would have been more highly regarded, but it was compared so much to Band of Brothers and it just couldn't live up to that. But few things can. Still very good. A Bridge Too Far. It's about the uh, Market Garden. Uh, Operation Market Garden, the attempt to try and end the war by Christmas by getting a quick uh, crossing into Germany through Holland. Didn't work out. A lot of stars in that show. Um, Gene Hackman's in it. Uh, oh, I can't even begin to name all of them. Um, Sean Connery. Band of Brothers again. Uh, this looks like their attack on Foy uh, at the end of the Bastogne, uh, at the end of the uh, Battle of the Bulge. I'd love to visit the spot where you can go and see their um, foxholes in those woods, the Bois Jacques where they were right before they attacked Foy. Flags of Our Fathers, excellent. It's about Iwo Jima. Uh, they did Flags of Our Fathers and uh, Letters from Iwo Jima, which each film showed the perspective of one side, and they're both really, really good. Fury, I have not seen yet. I know it's got uh, uh, Brad, Brad Pitt, uh, Shia LaBeouf. It's a tank crew toward the end of the war. I've heard mixed reviews from people about that one. There's Hacksaw Ridge, fantastic. It's about the true story of uh, of the only conscientious objector to ever uh, receive the Medal of Honor, or at least the first one to that point. Um, Desmond Doss, a phenomenal story. And actually they had to kind of dumb it down because his real story was so hard to believe. Um, Downfall, oh, so good. Uh, German language film about the last days of Berlin about what was going on in Hitler's bunker. Highly recommend that one. Unbroken. I haven't seen this yet, but a good friend of mine, Craig Scott, actually got to meet the man that that movie's about. Uh, uh, started with a Z, Zamparelli or something like that. Well, I guess that's all of them, but uh, yeah, obviously there's a lot more films that could have been included in there. Uh, the Longest Day, I can't believe they didn't include The Longest Day, which I think is one of the best World War II films ever made, uh, about the events leading up to and including uh, the uh, invasion of Normandy. Uh, I think uh, the movie starring Tom Selleck as Eisenhower, showing kind of the planning that was going on uh, for that is very, very good. I think it's, is it called Ike? I think it's called Ike. Uh, that's very good. Are there other ones that you didn't see that you would recommend that uh, you des you think deserve to be mentioned? Uh, I think there are some really good ones out there that didn't get mentioned. But those are my thoughts on those ones. Let me know your thoughts. Drop a like if you would. Subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you again soon. Merry Christmas.